Between Russia and the United States sentiments of good will continue to be mutually cherished. In a government whose distinguishing characteristic should be a diffusion and equalization of its benefits and burdens the advantage of individuals will be augmented at the expense of the community at large. On receiving from the people the sacred trust twice confided on my illustrious predecessor, and which he has discharged so faithfully and so well, I know that I cannot expect to perform the arduous task with equal ability and success. The case of the Seminoles constitutes at present the only exception to the successful efforts of the government to remove the Indians to the homes assigned them west of the Mississippi. The law increasing and organizing the military establishment of the United States has been nearly carried into effect, and the army has been extensively and usefully employed during the past season. The people under our system, like the king in a monarchy, never dies. As to the presidency, the two happiest days of my life were those of my entrance upon the office and my surrender of it. No evil can result from its inhibition more pernicious than its toleration. There is a power in public opinion in this country, and I thank God for it, for it is the most honest and best of all powers, which will not tolerate an incompetent or unworthy man to hold in his weak or wicked hands the lives and fortunes of his fellow citizens. The government should not be guided by temporary excitement, but by sober second thought. It seems proper, at all events, that by an early enactment similar to that of other countries the application of public money by an officer of government to private uses should be made a felony and visited with severe and ignominious punishment. If laws acting upon private interests cannot always be avoided, they should be confined within the narrowest limits, and left wherever possible to the legislatures of the states. Mutual forbearance and reciprocal concessions, through their agency the Union was established, the patriotic spirit from which they emanated will forever sustain it. We remain at peace with all nations, and no efforts on my part consistent with the preservation of our rights and the honor of the country shall be spared to maintain a position so consonant to our institutions. The less government interferes with private pursuits, the better for general prosperity. It affords me sincere pleasure to be able to apprise you of the entire removal of the Cherokee Nation of Indians to their new homes west of the Mississippi. Our country presents on every side the evidences of that continued favor under whose auspices it has gradually risen from a few feeble and dependent colonies to a prosperous and powerful confederacy. I tread in the footsteps of illustrious men, in receiving from the people the sacred trust confided to my illustrious predecessor. The United States have fulfilled in good faith all their treaty stipulations with the Indian tribes, and have in every other instance insisted upon a like performance of their obligations. With European powers no new subjects of difficulty have arisen, and those which were under discussion, although not terminated, do not present a more unfavorable aspect for the future preservation of that good understanding which it has ever been our desire to cultivate. Banks properly established and conducted are highly useful to the business of the country, and will doubtless continue to exist in the state so long as they conform to their laws and are found to be safe and beneficial. The connection which formerly existed between the government and banks was in reality injurious to both, as well as to the general interests of the community at large. Those who have wrought great changes in the world never succeeded by gaining over chiefs, but always by exciting the multitude. The first is the resource of intrigue and produces only secondary results, the second is the resort of genius and transforms the universe. Every proper exertion has been made and will be continued to carry out the wishes of Congress in relation to the tobacco trade, as indicated in the several resolutions of the House of Representatives and the legislation of the two branches. For myself, therefore, I desire to declare that the principle that will govern me in the high duty to which my country calls me is a strict adherence to the letter and spirit of the Constitution as it was designed by those who framed it. 
My conviction of the necessity of further legislative provisions for the safekeeping and disbursement of the public monies and my opinion in regard to the measures best adapted to the accomplishment of those objects have been already submitted to you. The condition of the tribes which occupy the country set apart for them in the West is highly prosperous, and encourages the hope of their early civilization. They have for the most part abandoned the hunter state and turned their attention to agricultural pursuits. The national will is the supreme law of the republic, and on all subjects within the limits of his constitutional powers should be faithfully obeyed by the public servant. With respect to the northeastern boundary of the United States, no official correspondence between this government and that of Great Britain has passed since that communicated to Congress toward the close of their last session. It is easier to do a job right than to explain why you didn't. The atonement of Jesus Christ is the only remedy and rest for my soul. Railroad carriages are pulled at the enormous speed of 15 miles per hour by engines which, in addition to endangering life and limb of passengers, roar and snort their way through the countryside, setting fire to the crops, scaring the livestock, and frightening women and children. The Almighty certainly never intended that people should travel at such breakneck speed. I am more than ever convinced of the dangers to which the free and unbiased exercise of political opinion, the only sure foundation and safeguard of Republican government, would be exposed by any further increase of the already overgrown influence of corporate authorities. Most men are not scolded out of their opinion. Is it possible to be anything in this country without being a politician? I shall tread in the footsteps of my illustrious predecessor. In time of peace there can, at all events, be no justification for the creation of a permanent debt by the federal government. Its limited range of constitutional duties may certainly under such circumstances be performed without such a resort. There is but one reliance. We remain at peace with all nations, and no efforts on my part consistent with the preservation of our rights and the honor of the country shall be spared to maintain a position so consonant to our institutions. The second, sober thought of the people is seldom wrong, and always efficient. Which quotation do you like the most? Don't forget to subscribe.